Hebrews 10, the Amplified. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the consistently righteous man, upright and in right standing with God, runs into it and is safe, high above evil and strong. Lord, today you are a fortress and high tower. You are Jehovah, the all-becoming one. Today you are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Father, we ask you to remove discouragement and despair, anxiety and fear, depression and defeat. God, heal our brokenness by your power. Father, we ask you to remove the worn, weak treads as if we were a garment and replace them with new ones. Bring strength, renewal, restoration. Rejuvenate, refresh, and energize us. In the name of Jesus, our healer, our miracle-working God. Give us victory in our lives and power to defeat the forces of darkness and evil against us. We speak life, God's favor, God's love, so infinite, boundless and unfailing. We thank you in the wonderful name of Jesus, or Jehovah Rapha today. In your name we pray and we give you thanks. Amen. Nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're all living. Oh, your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of life. Comes free, and my shame is on your presence. Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come for
Psalms, Psalm chapter 30. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. And in this psalm, it speaks about the morning on its way. It's one of the punchlines and one of the climactic verse. In verse 5, it says, weeping may last for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Psalm 30 gives us perspective on a lot of issues going on in our lives. And we, I know we live in a very turbulent time in the world. And it seems like darkness have this, has descended on the earth. And we all, in our own personal way, feel a sense of darkness. And when darkness comes, confusion ensues. And when confusion ensues, we are lost for perspective and we don't know which way to turn and for those of you who feel that we are in a darkness morning will come light will come because God is light he is the light in your darkness even though you don't see the light of day he is the light in your darkness the dark night will pass I want to make this first point the dark night passes in verse 5, as I said, it says, Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Everything that you are experiencing now will pass. Again, we have this contrast here of weeping and joy. Weeping turns into joy, night into morning, darkness into light. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. The word but is used here, which tells us that the statement that precedes the word but is not final. There is something more you should know about this. In this case, the first statement is valid. Weeping may stay for the night. That's valid and that is true. However, the second statement does not change the first but causes it to lose its effect. Hear it again in a different translation. Weeping may last for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. The other translation, tears may flow in the night, but joy comes in the morning. Whatever is happening now will change. Whatever is happening now will lose its effect and give way to something else. Night will pass and daylight will come. If there is night somewhere, there will always be morning. Just know that wherever there is night, 
There is a morning coming. There will be light. Light, night must always, must always give way to morning. And one thing you must recognize about night is night is short. It is just for a short time. It is temporary. It's not meant to last. I know sometimes the night feels long, but it's temporary. It's short. And the scripture tells us that darkness is a reality of life. We must and we will face darkness. We will have weeping. We will have difficult times. But it does not have to rule our lives and not be permanent. You must go through the night in order to get through the morning. Just always know this. But when the light comes, darkness must take its exit. Darkness must leave. And the psalmist uses this illustration of night and reminds us that night must always move to morning. Wherever there is night, there will always be a morning. There is a morning somewhere. And wherever that morning is on the earth, it will eventually get to you. So the night never lasts forever. It will get to you. You do not have to go and get the morning. The morning will come to you. God brings it to you. Just wait on the morning and trust God while you are in the night seasons and the morning will come. God will bring you through it. You see, it tells us something that weeping and night has a limit. It's for the night. Weeping is for the night. But there is no limitation to joy. It says joy comes in the morning. Both anger and weeping has, have boundaries and a time. Not so with joy and favor. Do not just accept the temporary negatives in your life and keep that as, uh, as the standard, as the measure of your life because joy and daylight is coming. Look for what God is doing in your life when the night seasons because he is always doing something. And I do understand that the night seasons are very real. And God is concerned about those night seasons, but you do not have to stay in the night seasons. You can move along. You may be suffering, but that suffering is temporary. You may feel forgotten, but you are not forgotten. You see, when you go through the night, live in the permanent because the permanent is coming. His joy, the daylight is coming. God gives you what is lasting. Whatever God gives you, it's not temporary. It is lasting. You see, the psalmist was saying here that the long night will end and joy will come. You see, joy is already there and it will be there. But you will see when the light comes, you will see it clearly. Do not hold on to the dark. I want to remind you and I want to tell you this. Do not hold on to the dark. Always look for the light. Look for the morning. Anticipate the morning. The Bible says that God makes all things new and does all things good. John 1, 4 to 5. The word was the source of life and this life brought light to the people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never put it out. You see, light puts out darkness, but darkness never puts out light. Jesus is our light, and he is here today. He will enter into your situation, and he will deal with your situation. Do not let the night rule you. Move on. The morning is coming. It is dark now, but morning is coming. Isaiah 60 tells us, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Anticipate the morning. Anticipate the morning. Look for the morning. Know that it will come. And, and, and darkness requires a response. What did the psalmist do in the night? What did he do? Darkness requires a response to it. How do you respond to the darkness will mean how you embrace the light. In the darkness, we can constantly be anxious of how it makes us feel. Or we can anticipate the coming of the morning and look for the light. There is life even in the darkness. 
while it may be scary, while it may seem difficult, there is life. You see, the darkness can be rewarding. Light reveals, but darkness also manifests some things. It manifests things in our lives. There are some things that will only manifest in the dark. Nocturnal creatures can only come out in the dark. That's the only time they would manifest. And sometimes we have to deal with our lives when things come out in the dark. So when the darkness comes, you can turn that into joy. You can turn it into something profitable. You see, when things show up in the darkness, you are able to deal with them because they show up from where they are hiding. It may bring fear, it may bring pain, it may bring distress, among other things. But if you let the light and the, of the morning come, it will strengthen you and it will dispel the darkness. You see, when darkness rises in our lives, it tells us about our ability to trust God. We must draw on our ability and our faith and know what we believe. It tells us that we can endure if you are waiting for the morning, you can endure. It builds up endurance. You must be able to endure and deal with the darkness of night if you are to get to your morning. If you do not deal with the darkness, if you do not endure the night, you will not get to the morning. The morning is coming. It comes with trust and knowing God and knowing who you are in God because the Lord will bring you through all of the darkness. There are three things here about the psalm, and the psalm pivots on the engagement of these three. If you read the entire psalm, I did not read all of it, but I will refer to it. You see, he opens up, the psalmist opens up with praise and thanksgiving. All through the psalm, psalm he keeps coming back to praise and thanksgiving. It tells us something that he always placed a focus on God. This is what praise and thanksgiving does, and thanksgiving keeps us contented. It keeps us with a heart of gratitude. And it always brings us back to God. If when, you are, if when you go through your darkness, you are continually thankful and express gratitude to God, you will get through the darkness. Praise and worship will also break discouragement. Sometimes we just have to praise God. You just have to lift your voice. You don't necessarily know how to do it right and you do not have to know it right but if you begin to look to God and begin to thank him if you begin to recall that God has kept you through so many years or whatever situations you have dealt with and he has kept you and and begin to realize that he will continue to keep you God never leaves you where you are he always comes to you praise and thanksgiving will break discouragement and despair in the darkness. Recall God's goodness in your life. In verse 12 it says, that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Lord my God, I will praise you forever. When you express the goodness of God it does not just state the truth but it anticipates what God will do and can do in your life. Keep God constantly before you. I want to remind you to let God's presence fill your lives. Sometimes we just got to think about God's goodness and his presence will fill our heart. He calls for God's help through the psalm in verse Two, he says, Lord my God, I call to you for help and you heal me. In verse 3, Lord, you, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spread me from going down to the pit. To you I called. To the Lord I cried for mercy. Hear, Lord, and be merciful to me. Lord, be my help. It gives us a model we can follow. The second thing, call for God's help. Don't be afraid to call for God's help. He knows where you are. Ask him to help you. He has ordained that we should pray. And when we pray, he will respond to our lives. He will respond to your call for help. Just call upon him today. Do not just stay in the night. Again, I repeat, 
but call for God's help and God's mercy. Wherever you are today, however dark it seems today, you can call on God for help. You may think, I can't pray. You may think, I do not deserve to call on God. But God does not look at you like that. He doesn't look at you like that. He is God. The fact that you are listening to this sermon this morning tells me that you have that ability to call on God. Call on him and let him intervene in your situations. Let him bring his influence into your life in the name of Jesus. Believe him and trust him to come upon you because God responds to the cries of his children. We also see faith and trust in God's goodness. This is what he said. When I felt secure, I said, I will never be shaken. Lord, when you favored me, you made, me, made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Lord, I called. To the Lord, I cried for mercy. And it tells us something. That when David, he was telling us here that when he had this self-confidence and he trusted only in himself, he failed to have faith in God. But he got a reality check in all of this. Because he said later on, but when you hid your face, I was dismayed. You see, darkness disappears with God's light. You see, David was in a place, and sometimes we get in a place where we become complacent. And we fail to remember God. Even when you go through this darkness, you are so surrounded by the darkness that you, it, it has not crossed your mind to look to God. But I want to remind you today, whatever darkness you are in, look to God. He will touch your life. In verses 11 and 12, it says, you have changed my sadness into a joyful dance. You have taken away my sorrow and surrounded me with joy. So I will not be silent. I will sing praise to you, Lord. You are my God. I will give you thanks forever. When we walk through a dark time in our lives, and whatever dark times you are walking through, allow it to change you. Allow it to move in your life. Because this too will pass. You may weep now, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping now, joy is coming. And you can live in that joy. Darkness now, light is coming coming it is not far away he uses this analogy of night and day in the night sometimes in the night well always in the night the morning has come but it's still dark the morning has already broken we are on the verge of moving to the morning you are always moving to morning but it takes some time for the light to be seen do not be, stay trapped in the darkness and not anticipate the morning. While it is still dark, morning is on its way. Morning has already broken. You just need to wait for the light. Do not quit in the dark. Wait for the light. I'm speaking to someone today. Wherever you are, you are thinking about quitting. You are thinking about giving up. The enemy has told you to give up. Do not give up. God is on his way. God can intervene in your situations right now. Wherever you are, I am speaking to you. Do not give up. God will take care of you. He is the great God who cares for you. And wherever, again, I want to remind you made this point but I want to make it again that wherever there's a night there's a morning coming just wait for it let me just recap some things here for you darkness will pass it must pass darkness is temporary light has power over your darkness light and joy always come. Pray, praise, call upon God. Your darkness will fall. It will pass. I will pray for you after we sing this song. We serve a great God. 
He's a father to all of us. He's a good father. He's good to his creation. The scripture tells us that he is good to his creation and he will rescue you from the pit wherever you are. Some of you may not feel a deep darkness, but wherever, whatever situation you are in, God can rescue you. Whatever you are dealing with, God can rescue you. I want you to call on him. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead. It's who you are, it's who you are, I got love by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. and I've seen many searching for answers, far and wide, but I God to move in your hearts right now as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your power. I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your strength. I thank you that you are Lord over all and every situation or every situation that we face right now. I speak life into dead situations. I speak light into darkness into the darkness of depression, 
into the darkness of sicknesses, into the darkness of lack, into the darkness of hopelessness, into the darkness of confusion, into the darkness where we cannot see our way, that your light will shine right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever problems we are dealing with, let your power fall. You are a great God. You will reach down for some who, have, who feel they are their lowest point. God, reach and pull them out in the name of Jesus. For some who feel the effects of brokenness, reach and pull them out. For some who feel difficulties today, just the difficulties of life have descended on them. I pray right now for God's power to fall in the name of Jesus. Touch every heart. I believe you and I trust you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for viewing.